Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about winter dormancy for Venus flytraps. One of the things uh, people get wrong most often is dormancy. Uh, as a matter of fact, most people don't even realize that Venus flytraps go through dormancy. So it's really important if you want to have a Venus flytrap that's going to live for an extended period of time that you understand how winter dormancy works, what temperatures you need to keep it at, what lighting is needed if any, uh, also, watering is very different during dormancy, so we're going to be kind of covering all those different things today. Uh, we'll also be talking a little bit about um, how to recognize when winter dormancy is coming. Uh, so we're just going to kind of cover everything from A to Z with winter dormancy so that you can keep your Venus flytrap alive for many, many, many years to come. Alright, so uh, you can see I have my, my Venus flytraps out here. I don't have any that are in full dormancy right now. I'm going to do another video later uh, showing you what they look like when they're in full dormancy. I've got some that are kind of starting dormancy so you can kind of see what the beginning stages of dormancy looks like. But unfortunately, I don't have any that are in full dormancy right now. Definitely make sure and subscribe uh, to my channel and, and like this video. I'm going to be coming out with a video here um, probably like mid-January showing you what they look like when they're mid-dormant. Uh, so that's definitely coming, but today we're going to be talking more about dormancy than actually showing dormancy. I just have these out here for something for you to look at while you listen to me uh, talk about winter dormancy. All right, before we jump into that, I just wanted to thank you for being here. As you know, I'm trying to start my own uh, carnivorous plant nursery. You being here helps support that dream. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video. I'm really working hard to, to get this going. Um, one of the things that I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to extend my growing season uh, up here in the Northwest uh, because we just don't have a long enough growing period. That's why I have these under a light right now. They're not quite in full dormancy if I was just growing these as a hobby these would probably be outside right now or in an unheated room attached to my home going into full dormancy but as of right now I'm still trying to extend them um, during the growing season just a little bit but we're gonna talk about full dormancy today so thank you so much for being here I really appreciate it uh, let's let's start talking about it first thing we're gonna talk about real quick um, is how they look when they go into dormancy I wish I had plants that were in dormancy right now for you but I don't um, but what you're gonna look at uh, what you're going to see is one of the first things you're going to notice is your Venus flytraps are going to start growing a little bit closer to the ground. You can see this one here. You can see how close all those are growing to the ground. Um, that's because this has actually started its winter dormancy. You can see all these are growing really, really close to the ground. Uh, and that's mostly because I have lowered the photo period for these Venus flytraps. And it's also colder in here than it was outside when I pulled them in. So it's sort of the beginning stages of dormancy. They realize it's starting to get colder. They're starting to be less light. Um, which means that dormancy is definitely going to be coming. Uh, well, another thing you'll start to notice is some of your Venus fly traps, uh, some of the actual traps will start to turn black. Now uh, you can see some of these here are black. That's really not all that different than in the summer. The, the color of your Venus fly trap will fade a little bit. They won't be quite as vibrant of a green and you will slowly start to see some of the traps dying off. And that's perfectly fine because they're not getting a lot of sun, they're not getting a lot of light, and they're probably not eating as many insects in the wintertime. Um, so they're not really expanding or growing. So some of these older fly traps are going to start to die off and that's perfectly fine, don't worry about it. Black fly traps in winter dormancy is not a red flag. Um, it doesn't hurt anything. Now, with that being said, if you notice that you're getting a ton of black fly traps and it's happening really rapidly and it looks like your plant is starting to die, there could be a bigger problem. You might have too much water um, or you might have a pest problem. So make sure and, and still, if you start to get a lot of rapidly black uh, Venus flytrap heads, there could still be a problem. So you, you may need to sort of diagnose what that problem is. But a few black flytraps here and there, and then seeing some of them turn black and die off uh, slowly while not any new ones are coming up, that's perfectly normal for winter dormancy. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is what temperatures you need to maintain. Uh, during winter dormancy. If you live in zones 8 to 11, uh, you've kind of won the Venus flytrap lottery and you don't really need to do anything. Leave them outside. They'll be fine during the winter. It doesn't get too cold, um, but it gets cold enough to put them into dormancy. You really just have to leave them outside. If you have some sort of freak weather where you're getting really, really low temperatures during the winter time, you may need to bring them in for a little bit during those really low freezing temperatures. But other than that, you can probably just leave them outside and you're good to go. For everyone else, and, and particularly me since I live in the Northwest, what I'm looking for is keeping these fly traps between 25 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that can be a little bit tricky because it does get really cold here in the winter time. It doesn't get over 45 degrees very often. That's kind of rare uh, for up here in the Northwest. So it's not something I'm really worried about too often. It will happen occasionally. I don't think it happens enough to really hurt the plants, but it does get below 25 degrees very often in the winter time. So what I like to do for my Venus fly traps is I like to try to put them in a, an unheated room. And that's actually what I'm gonna be doing this year is I have a room that's attached to my garage that's, that's unheated. 
and I will be putting my Venus fly traps in there. That's what I'm going to do personally. Um, the other thing that you can do, if you don't have a room or a garage to put them in, you can actually go ahead and overwinter them. So what you can do is you can, um, if it snows a lot in your area, you can let them be covered in snow. That's perfectly fine. The snow actually insulates them. So you're kind of good to go if they get covered in snow. But what you can do uh, when it gets really cold is you can insulate them with like some bark, pine needles, uh, some dead leaves. Uh, you can even get some like uh, that burlap material that you can put over the plants to help insulate them or a combination of those things. Uh, sometimes all of those things can kind of help you keep your plants insulated. On top of that, if you let the snow cover them, more often than not, that's actually enough to keep your plants insulated even if you get down into the teens um, in the winter time. So uh, overwintering and insulating them if you're gonna leave them outside is perfectly fine. That's something that a lot of people do in the Northwest and it does work. Another thing that you can do is if you wanna, if you wanna get them out of the elements, um, you can purchase like a mini greenhouse or cold frame. Um, this will keep them out of the elements. It'll still be cold in there, but what you can do is you can actually put like a uh, like a grow bulb in there. Um, not necessarily for the light because you don't really need the light during winter dormancy, which we're going to talk about here in a second, um, but mostly just for the warmth to kind of keep it above that, that 25 degree mark. If the Venus fly traps go under 25 degrees, it's not the end of the world. Uh, if it's just for a couple of days, you're probably fine. You don't want them to freeze for too many days consecutively, however. You want to make sure that if it, go, if it looks like it's going to be a really cold week or something, it might be better to bring them in the home and let them get a little bit warm rather than letting them get that cold. Either way, you don't want them going above 50 for too often or staying under that, that 25 degrees for too often. Uh, Venus flytraps are known for living through really cold temperatures, uh, so they can survive that really, really cold, but you are increasing your risk of them not making it through winter dormancy if you allow them to freeze for, for too many too many days or, or like a week or two in a row. Uh, so you just want to try to avoid them getting the, those really cold frozen temperatures. The best thing you can do is find a way to, to bring a little bit of heat, like a, a light bulb or something like that will, will typically be enough heat to keep them from getting really, really cold, especially if you have a, a mini greenhouse or, or like a, a little cold frame to put them in. If you live in a zone three, it's probably too cold outside. Um, it gets really, really cold in those areas. So you're gonna probably wanna find a garage or something and you're gonna have to find a way to, to artificially heat them a little bit, whether that's with like a heater on a timer or um, like I said, a bulb, something like that in a garage or an unheated room is probably gonna be your best bet for winter dormancy. Uh, you can't bring them in for too long during dormancy because if you let them, most people's homes are between 60 and 75 degrees. Uh, and if you get that warm, it, it, it's just, it won't work for dormancy. It's not cold enough to put them in a uh, dormancy state. It'll actually confuse the plants a lot. And then what'll happen is, is they'll, they'll eventually die because they're kind of in and out of dormancy. They get really confused and then, you know, they won't make it. So um, they're not getting enough light during that period. And we're gonna talk about lighting here. Um, actually, that's a good segue. Let's go ahead and talk about light. Or before we do that, um, one thing to note with the temperature, the smaller your pot, the more likely they are to freeze the less insulated they're gonna be. So the more soil in your pot, so like these bigger pots over here, they got more soil. They're gonna insulate the, the roots to the fly trap a lot better than this little guy here. This little guy, if it freezes, there's no insulation in there, it's less protected. So if you're gonna leave them outside in, in the cold weather all winter, it's good. It's better to have these bigger pots um, because they are gonna have more natural insulation from the soil that they're in. All right, let's talk about lighting. Um, lighting is another thing that people ask a lot of questions about. It's kind of a confusing topic. Really, when it, when it comes down to it, if you're keeping your Venus flytrap between 25 uh, and 45 degrees, you do not need any light. Um, the light is really not important. They're in a suspended state and they're not growing. And the only time that the Venus flytrap really needs uh, any light is if it's in a growing state. During that period, you really don't need to give them any type of grow light. If you live in an area that, that you have to maintain above like a 45 to 50 degree, they will still go to dormant, um, but they are actually gonna need a little more light. They're, they're not gonna be in a full dormancy. Uh, anything over that 45 degree mark, they're still gonna be growing a little bit and they do need that additional light. So under that 45 degree mark, you're fine. Over 45 degrees to 50, 55 degrees, you're probably gonna need to give them some light. Uh, with that being said, you can tone it way back during that time because they're not growing nearly as much, uh, but they should have some kind of light over that. If you're keeping them under 45 degrees, no light is necessary. Well, the other thing we're gonna talk about here real quick is watering during dormancy. This is another thing that people really, really care. I just had a comment the other day uh, where somebody was asking, um, you know, how much water should I give them? I've been leaving them in a tray of water during dormancy. And that's actually one of the worst things that you can do 
During winter dormancy, your Venus flytrap needs significantly less water. It's really important that you actually let that surface dry out just a little bit before you give them their next dose of water. Uh, during the winter time when it gets really cold, they're a lot more susceptible to uh, fungus and, and mold growing on them. Um, and they're also a lot more susceptible to root rot. Uh, you can actually give a Venus flytrap root rot really easy in the winter time if you keep them in a tray of water and, and really, really wet. So what I recommend is that you let that surface dry out um, before you give them any more water when they're in that winter dormancy. Um, you let them dry out a lot more than you would during the summertime. They're a lot less likely to dry out and die. Uh, it's kind of hard to dry them out too much during the winter unless you just completely forget about them. Um, but it is really important that you do not overwater them because it's really, really easy to do. I would never leave a tray of water for more than a day in the winter time. And if you don't want to mess with the tray of water, you don't want to forget and accidentally leave them in the tray, you can just top water them like once a week. Uh, one of the, the biggest tips I can give though for that is know the, the weight of your pot. Um, if you know the weight of your pot when it needs water versus it has water, that's one of the easiest ways to know whether or not you need to give your Venus flytrap water uh, during dormancy period. If it's really, really light and you can feel it needs water, go ahead and give it a little water. It's going to stay heavy longer um, than it does in the, in the summertime. That's one thing you'll really notice. But one of the biggest things people get wrong with winter dormancy is definitely too much water. Another, another tip um, that I wanna give you guys, I think this is really important. If you live in an area that's this sort of abnormal, like maybe it's way too cold or you have um, way too warm temperatures all year round to trigger a dormancy, uh, join a local group. Um, find a local group on Facebook, Find a group of people that grow carnivorous plants, especially Venus flytrap, since that's what we're talking about right now, and, and find out what they do for dormancy. Like, it's likely that they successfully have gotten plants through dormancy and they know exactly um, what it is that you're gonna need to do. I can give you a lot of information and advice from more of a general standpoint, um, but what it comes down to is that sometimes these rules are a little bit different depending on the area that you live in. So one of the best things that you can do for a successful dormancy, especially if you're in an area that's a little bit unusual weather-wise, like Hawaii or Florida, is find a group of, of growers in your area and, and ask that question to somebody local. Um, they're gonna be able to give you the absolute best advice for what how to put your plant through, dormant, through a dormant period um, in that specific area. Uh, last thing I'm gonna talk about, if you're desperate, you, your area that you live in is too warm or the area that you live in gets too cold, uh, year round, you may have to resort to refrigerator dormancy. I don't recommend this as a first resort. This is an absolute last resort, but you can keep, you know, obviously your refrigerators are typically between 35 and 40 degrees. So it's sort of the optimal temperature um, and you can keep your Venus fly traps in there. One thing you're gonna wanna do um, is you're gonna wanna get a fungicide and make sure your Venus flytrap has that fungicide on it because they are so susceptible to that, the fungus and the mold and mildew and stuff um, when they're being kept in a fridge. Uh, and then you'll also wanna put them in a Ziploc bag, um, whether you keep them in um, your pot or you just bare root them in there, either way actually works, but you wanna make sure you dip them in that fungicide a little bit before you put them in there. And then make sure that they're wrapped up in Ziploc bag to help protect them and the other things in your fridge. I'm actually gonna be putting some of my plants through refrigerator dormancy, so I'm gonna do a video on that. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and, and check that out as I bring that content. So you guys can actually see what I do specifically to, to put these through a, a dormancy uh, through the refrigerator. So um, that's all I can think of right now. I, 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 I wanted to, to bring you guys as much information as I could think of. One of some, some of the main questions that I'm getting in my comments right now is all about winter dormancy, which is understandable. It's the time of the year for, for plants to be going through dormancy. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, make sure and sound off in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. It, it, like I said, if you live in a specific area that's really difficult to gauge and, and I'm not familiar with it, uh, I've read a lot of uh, people's information and comments through different groups, so I may know, but one of the best things you can do, like I said, is to join that group that, that grows plants locally, carnivorous plants or Venus flytraps in particular, and they can probably give you the best information on it. If there any, any inf information in the comments, uh, let me know what you guys think, uh, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Uh, if you disagree with me, let's talk about it because I'm always open to different methods and, and ways of doing things. So if you have some information, something that works better, definitely let me know and we can talk about it. But questions below and uh, anything else, thanks a lot for being here. I appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and uh, I really hope to catch you guys in my next video. Bye.